Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for another one of our live video chats. Um, today we are going to be joined by uh, Justin Grainert, our uh, VP of Public Policy again, to give us some updates on the latest um, uh, stimulus package that just passed the House. Um, and also by uh, Senator Bo Watson, um, who's going to update us on some of the efforts that are going on here uh, within our state. Uh, welcome to uh, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, why don't we start with you, uh, Senator? Um, can, you, can you give us uh, some updates on uh, the response uh, from the state thus far? Well, of course, here in about uh, 30 minutes, Governor Lee will We'll be doing a press uh, briefing to discuss his at least initial strategy of reopening or restarting uh, the business community in uh, 89 of the 95 uh, counties. Uh, the other six, and really the Hamilton County being one of those, um, are uh, taking perhaps a different approach, although we haven't heard completely what the plans will be. I do believe that uh, Mayor Coppinger has said publicly that he will follow the state's lead. And I know that uh, Mayor Burke in the city of Chattanooga uh, may be doing uh, something a little bit different. I actually heard earlier this morning that the big four cities, which is Knoxville, Chattanooga, Nashville, and Memphis, uh, may be releasing their, their, their plan either simultaneously or shortly after, or maybe they already have but anyway. So that's in process now, I think everybody realizes that um, uh, there are trade-offs um, in shutdowns like this. Um, health and safety of citizens is obviously of paramount importance, but uh, the economic life of the state and the country um, is, is, is important and has to be put into the equation. So I think we're trying to do that now. Uh, from the legislative perspective and from the Hamilton County delegation's perspective, the legislature will go back uh, to work on June or first part of June. Uh, we will, I believe, revisit our budget projections based on the new information that we've gained over the past, what will have been the past two and a half months since we passed a preliminary budget. And I anticipate we will make uh, some modifications to that. Um, probably pretty significant modica modifications to that in terms of revenues for the state. Obviously, uh, there's been a big impact on the country, but there's been a big impact on Tennessee. We have a nice rainy day fund, but it's not going to be substantial enough to probably handle the, the hit that we're going to take uh, to finish out this year and also moving into next year. Okay. Um, and you, you, I believe, were just uh, appointed to the Financial Accountability Task Force set up by the governor. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and what, what your um, goal is with it? Well, the, the goal, I'll start with the goal. Um, the goal is to, as we always try and do uh, in Tennessee, is to try and maximize the use of the federal dollars in our response to uh, the COVID-19 crisis. There have been now four different funding um, packages passed by Congress. The most recent was yesterday. Um, each of those funding packages have different um, priorities uh, and focuses to them. The task force that I'm uh, a part of, along with Lieutenant Governor McNally, um, Speaker uh, Cameron Sexton, uh, Pat Marsh in the House, um, Ramesh Ackberry in the Senate, and um, Representative Love in the House, along with the Comptroller of the Treasury. Its primary responsibility is to work along with the executive branch in how we allocate those dollars. Now, uh, many of those dollars have specific um, requirements around them and are directed in specific areas. Uh, there's about $2.3 billion that will come to the state, but all of that has, in one of the packages, but all of that has certain parameters around it. Um, there's also other packages like that go to K-12 education that we will have some oversight over, uh, higher education. Um, obviously the newest package around hospitals, how that will funnel through the state uh, will be something that this task force will look at. But ultimately our responsibility is to make sure that we appropriately utilize those dollars to the maximum capacity. 
Okay. Um, and speaking of those dollars, um, some more uh, are on the way at this point. Um, we just had uh, the next tranche pass the house uh, yesterday, I believe. Um, Justin, could you give us a little uh, update on that and, and Senator, feel free to weigh in with any of your own thoughts about it? Sure. So um, thank you, Senator, for being with us today. Jeremy, appreciate the, um, the nod here. Um, so uh, there's been a lot of talk um, since the last uh, big package, the CARES Act passed, um, obviously with the Paycheck Protection Program and some other things that have been uh, um, and quite popular uh, for our, our business community. Um, they had originally set aside uh, $349 billion. Um, those funds were exhausted within about 10 to 12 days. Um, so a lot of folks out there have had these loan documents ready to go. They're at their bank. Um, and how that process works is, you know, a business goes and takes theirs, takes their application to the bank. The bank does their, their part of it and then sends the documents all to SBA, um, where SBA would then give a loan number to that loan, which secured the money. Um, those dollars dried up again in about 10 days. And I know there are a lot of folks here in Chattanooga that, that have gone through that process um, and didn't get um, a loan number back for the original allotted funds. Um, after you know a week and a half, two weeks of negotiations between the Senate and the House, um, they put together a partial package um, that will increase the uh, $349 billion that was already appropriated by an additional $310 billion. Uh, $250 billion of that will go into the, the fund that was already set up for the Paycheck Protection Program, and that's most of your banks. Um, they also added that, that additional $60 billion. They set aside $30 billion for mid-sized banks. So any bank uh, or insured depository institution or credit union with uh, reserves of a, with assets of between $10 billion and $50 billion. And then they set aside another $30 billion for the same institutions with less than $10 billion. And the idea there is to get into the smaller banks, smaller communities um, that, that don't necessarily, wouldn't necessarily have the, uh, the wherewithal to get into some of these programs. So that $310 billion addition pulls the total up to $659 billion in the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, they also added uh, $10 billion for the idle loan grant fund, and that was that original $10,000 grant um, that you could get. I know they, they sort of were one of the few that ran out of money very, very quickly and had sort of changed the rules on how those, that $10,000 grant was, was divvied up. There's another 10 billion going there, and then another 50 billion going into the loan program on the other end of that grant cycle. So uh, there's another 60 billion there. Um, and then the package also included 75 billion more for hospitals. It didn't change any of the language on how that money was to be sent to hospitals. It just added more money. And then they added 25 billion for COVID-19 testing. Um, research development, validation, manufacturing, uh, and those sorts of things to try to help ramp up the, the testing. Um, that was done uh, in the Senate by unanimous consent. Um, on Tuesday, Thursday, the House came back um, and actually did a couple of things, but, but voted on this as well. Um, it's been sent to the president, and I, I believe I read today that uh, SBA will start administering loans again become a Monday. So I would suggest that while, you know, there's a lot of already pent up demand for these loans from people that have already gotten their paperwork in, if you are even remotely interested in trying to get one and you haven't done it yet, I would, I would get on that rather quickly. Um, another thing that sort of happened as well is some of these larger corporations we've heard have gotten paycheck protection loans and, and for, through some outrage, um, Shake Shack and, and uh, Bruce Chris among them. Um, a lot of them are, are starting to give that money back as well, which will also put some more money into the program. I think Treasury actually um, released a rule that you had to prove that you really needed the loans. And if you didn't, as a, as a major corporation, then you, were, you had a time limit to return the funds. So there may actually be a smaller tranche of money there as well that will come back into the Paycheck Protection Program. Okay. Um, and, you know, ju Justin mentioned uh, testing and um, uh, 
funds for hospitals in this. Uh, Senator, I know you, you've been working um, sort of on the front lines, making sure uh, with the rest of the legislature and, and state government, making sure that we're as prepared as possible. Um, do you have a sense at this point how our hospital capacity and our um, testing ramp up has been going? Well, of course, many, many may know or don't know in my normal life when I don't play the Senate gig, I work for HCA, the Park Ridge Medical Center here in Chattanooga. And um, actually, um, I think we've been a little bit surprised that we haven't had the uh, surge that we had anticipated. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, most of the hospitals across the state did a really good job of reducing their capacity by eliminating uh, elective surgeries and uh, uh, freeing up wings or areas of their hospital to where they could uh, cohort uh, patients who were positive or suspected positive for COVID-19. Um, so the biggest challenge really, as everyone knows, was beyond the testing was the, the supply chains for PPE or personal protective equipment. Uh, to be sure that frontline workers had adequate protection um, from the, the virus. I, be, I believe in most instances, those supply chains are significantly improved, although not uh, fully uh, resolved. Um, as we move into this sort of next phase of where we start um, opening uh, the, the economy back up, that is one of the metrics that um, the the unified command is watching closely is hospital capacity and the ability to uh, quickly uh, change direction if we needed to, if suddenly there was a, uh, a quick increase. Although most of the experts that I'm aware of would anticipate that as we move into the summer months, the virus like most influenza type viruses will start to die down. And then the question will be what happens in the fall. Um, that will give hospitals and the healthcare system um, uh, several months to continue to prepare for what could be a, another another uh, outbreak. Although I do believe that, and our delegations talked about this a lot amongst ourselves, I do believe that uh, we will see a different kind of response uh, if the uh, the virus, uh, as many, I mean, it will. The flu comes around, you know, cyclically. Um, but because of the lessons that have been learned societally, uh, I think there's the, ch the chance that, that people will self-regulate much better than they have in the past. And you might actually not see as much of a response as you might ordinarily expect. And you'll also see a decrease in some of the other respiratory and influenza-like illnesses that we see normally because people have learned how to behave around these kinds of infectious diseases better. And more importantly to your members, uh, businesses have learned and are learning how to respond to these kind of infectious uh, diseases. And so if you were to go to the grocery store today or you know, any store that's open, you would see that they're learning how to uh, move uh, their customers through the stores more safely. They're much more conscious about uh, cleanliness. Uh, and I think that's a, a new learned behavior that's going to, to, to continue even after the COVID-19 and, and, and actually have a positive effect on many of the other infectious diseases that we deal with um, in our communities. All that to say, I think that uh, um, the Tennessee's had, uh, there, obviously there are critics everywhere, uh, but Tennessee's had a pretty good response to the virus. We're still, we're still seeing increased numbers. We will continue to see that, particularly as we increase our testing capacity. Um, over the next uh, two months, I think testing capacity will just continue to grow and we'll get a better, better an idea of you know, what the infection rate might be like in our communities, which will help us plan better. Uh, but to this date, I think our capacity in Tennessee is pretty good right now. Okay, um, and that, that sort of leads me into my next question. Um, uh, you, you mentioned businesses learning how, and, and individuals learning how to, you know, uh, appropriately, appropriately respond. Um, I know um, there, there's going to be some limits placed on businesses that are opening back up, 50% uh, capacity in a lot of cases. Um, are you aware of other guidelines um, that are going to be coming down from the state level well, um, you along those lines? Yeah, well, as you uh, know, the uh, governor put together a uh, economic uh, recovery task force um, 
our member from the Senate on there is uh, the Majority Leader Jack Johnson, and um, they are, as we speak, um, putting together along with the business community uh, what um, what those parameters might be. Obviously, the first parameter is that we that I think we're going to hear about today is the 50% restriction on restaurants and that kind of stuff. But I think they're also looking at ideas that are coming from um, the, the business community. For example, I think it was yesterday that uh, uh, Volkswagen announced that they would reopen on uh, May 3rd, be, be in their, uh, their operations again, which is huge for our community, huge for our state. And they have uh, are gonna be implementing some procedures within their business, uh, within their industry, for their facility that I think others will look at and, uh, and apply uh, to themselves with or without government uh, intervention. Because, um, you know, every business is like a hospital in a sense. You know, hospitals can't treat patients if the people who take care of the patients are sick. So you've got to take care of your workforce first. And so hospitals, while committed to caring for the, uh, the sick and infirmed, uh, they also have to pr protect the people who do that care. And I think business has learned that they, they're not just protecting the public, they're protecting their own employees. And so some of the restrictions or some of the guidance that the, the government will give, uh, industry will use. But I think there'll be many industries that go beyond that and create um, some new ideas and innovations for all of us to learn from on how we protect the workforce while simultaneously protecting the public. And I think, particularly in the manufacturing industry, there'll be a lot learned from what companies like uh, BW or uh, Nissan or McKee Foods or any of those, what, what we learn from them and their ability to implement um, social distancing and all those kind of things and still remain uh, efficient and uh, productive. Okay. Uh, great update. Um, is there anything else you either of you wanted to share before we uh, wrap up here? Well, I guess I would just put in everybody's ear um, that no state is going to avoid uh, the financial consequences of shutting down the economy. And a state like Tennessee, which has a heavy reliance on um, franchise and excise tax, a heavy reliance on sales tax, a heavy reliance on tourism and travel. Um, under the conditions of the shutdown that we, that we are experiencing and, and will experience to some degree over the next several weeks, there is no way we can avoid um, a significant impact to the state budget. I don't know we haven't come to a conclusion of exactly what that impact will be, but I know we have began, I have meetings today and meetings all through next week where um, we are beginning to really start to drill down so that when we come back in June, we can give an honest um, assessment of the state's financial uh, condition. And so I think the public uh, should be prepared for the fact that, that the budget's gonna be pretty lean uh, for the remainder of this year, the budget's going to be pretty lean for next year. I think the good news is, and your business people know better than probably anyone, the good news about all this is that uh, our financial, or I guess our, our, our economic fundamentals were never the question of this shutdown. It had to do with the health risk. And so hopefully those same kind of fundamentals uh, will help quickly restore, uh, you know, the uh, economic prosperity that we were, we were experiencing, but that will occur over time. We've got, you know, unemployment at, you know, I mean, heck, Justin, six months ago, we were bragging about how you know, we were, the problems we were experiencing because we were at full unemployment, that mm -hmm. people, companies couldn't find people to work because everybody who was working or wanted to work was working. Mm -hmm. Now we've, in a mere three months, you know, completely reversed all that. And so that will take time to work through, and it's going to cost a lot. Um, it's going to cost a lot to the state in terms of the unemployment trust fund. There's just a lot of parameters. So I think the public should prepare itself for, you know, every state to be fairly lean over the next uh, 
uh, the next uh, short term as we kind of adjust um, our, our budget. And, and, and lastly, that will, that will trickle down to the local governments as well. And so one of the things that the delegation has been doing over the past week is touching base with all of our local governments, meaning uh, the, the Hamilton County, the city of Chattanooga, and well, as well as our smaller cities to find out what kind of financial pressures they are currently experiencing so that we can be aware of those as we start looking at the totality of the state's budget. That's probably a longer <laughs> comment or answer than you wanted, but I think we really need to put that narrative out there, in the, particularly in the business community, that it's going to, it's going to be a tough year. Okay, um, thank you both. Um, that's really good information for all of our members to have, I think, um, a good assessment of where we are and where we're headed. Um, thank you both for joining us today. Appreciate you taking time out of um, what I know is a really extremely busy time uh, for you, Senator. Um, and uh, we will be back again next week with some more of these videos, folks. As usual, the recording will be posted afterwards. Um, so thank you, everyone. Yep. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys.